Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Apple Guy, and today we are going to be unboxing and taking a look at an iPod Photo. The iPod Photo was released on October 26, 2004, and Apple positioned the iPod Photo as a premium version of the iPod 4th generation. It had a LCD color display, which had a pixel per inch of 220 by 176, and the LCD can display up to 65,536 of colors. The iPod photo, as you can see here, came in a bigger box than iPods of today or even iPhones because they had more accessories included. And as you can see at the front of the box here, it does highlight the most important feature that you can see a color display and you can have photos on here. So you can essentially sync photos through iTunes 4.7 on both Mac and PC back in 2004 and today. So on the other side of the box, it does show you the iPod. It's in white and it has the color display. It has uh, music on there and it's showing you an album art and the playlist slideshow. On the other side, you do get in silver in iPod font, and it says 30 gigabyte PC plus Mac, and it says photo. So they wanted you to call this the iPod photo because of the color display and the ability to have photos on here. And on the other side, it shows you the actual size of the iPod Classic. So here it is. That's what it looks like from the picture on the box. On the bottom of the box, it has information regards the gigabytes storage, which is 30 gigabytes. And it tells you it's also a photo iPod, works on both Mac and Windows. And it says it holds up to 7,500 songs or 25,000 photos on a 30 gigabyte hard drive. So this is back when the iPods had hard drives in it, physical hard drives. Battery life is up to 15 hours for continuous music playback, or you can get five hours of photo slideshow playback with music using the rechargeable lithium ion battery that is built into the iPod, of course. And it highlights that it also has a high resolution backlit color LCD display, auto syncs music, books, photos, album art, playlist, and audiobooks with your Mac or PC. It weighs 5.9 ounces and only 0.63 inches thick, 2.4 inches wide, and 4.1 inches tall. And it says the it includes in the box, of course, the iPod photo, earphones, USB 2.0 cable, AC adapter, and iTunes for both Mac and Windows. And it says right here for the Mac requirements, you have to have a Macintosh with a Firewire or USB 2.0 port. Mac OS 10.2.8 or 10.3.4 or later, iPhoto 4.0.3 or later, iTunes 4.7 or later, and for Windows you need the you have to have a PC with either FireWire 400, USB 2.0 or a USB 2.0 card, which is a PCI PCI card that you can install on the desktop. It works with Windows 2000 with Service Pack 4 or later, Windows XP Home or later, or Professional with Service Pack 2 or later for Windows XP. Adobe Photoshop 2.0 or Elements 3.0 or later recommended, and iTunes 4.7 or later. And at the bottom you have serial numbers, and it was assembled in China, designed in California. And at the top, you do get a big Apple logo. So with that, we will take it out of the box. So with the iPod, in this little special box, it does say in the front here, designed by Apple in California. On the top, it tells you what is in the iPod, what comes with it, essentially. So the top is your headphones and power adapter and the other one is your USB cable, which is your 30 pin, and your CD that has iTunes 4.7 on it. So we're just gonna lay it out like here. 
and we'll open up the box. There it is, the iPod. So there's the iPod photo on the right hand side. To take that out, you would just lift up on it. Or it would come with, it would be wrapped in plastic and you would just be able to get it out easy. But here we would just lift on it and that's the iPod photo. We'll put that over here. And we'll take a look at what's included in the box. This was purchased on eBay, so it might not have everything in it, of course. So in terms of software, well, I mean, in terms of charger adapter and the wall plug-in, it doesn't include that or the headphones. It doesn't include the headphones or the wall adapter, but it should have the regulatory documentation. So we'll take a look at that. And yes, it just has the regulatory documentation, which it's in a nice little envelope. It says enjoy and you would cut there to open it. And here it would have all your CDs that you need. So it has special iPod software. So the iPod software, it lets you know install software before connecting iPod. So this probably just has iTunes on it and they just labeled it as iPod and that works both in Mac and Windows you have giant Apple stickers you have your Apple computer Inc software license agreement and one year limited warranty and it says free music for your iPod so essentially it's just an advertisement to go on iTunes music store and buy music for 99 cents each or you can get free music every single week that's if Apple still does this with their new music service and things like that. So that's pretty cool that they would throw an advertisement in there, get you to start getting some music. So we'll put all this stuff to the side. We'll get to the iPod. Okay, so here's the iPod photo. So this is what the photo looks like. That's the front of it. That's side, the back of it, the top, and on the bottom. So the iPod, it's made out of one piece of uh, polycarbonate plastic. It's the same that was used on the iBook, as you can see in the background, and on the iMacs at the time, and their other Apple laptops that used this white plastic on there. It also has the scroll wheel, which is touch sensitive, so it's not like the first generation model where it physically moved. This is just touch sensitive. And it's very intuitive because at the top it has menu, play pause at the bottom, skip track, go back a track, and you just have to move on it like that. So it has touch sensors in the ring itself, and then if you want to select something, you hit the, the center button. So the backlight at the bottom and music. The iPod has a battery indicator on the right hand corner, time in the middle, and it would go in between the time and say iPod or if you named it it would have your name or whatever name you wanted it. On the bottom of the iPod you do have your 30 pin connector. So the 30 pin on the fourth generations and going later would use a USB for charging and syncing. You can use the Firewire, but at this point in time, it, they would all come with USB 2.0 cables and it would have the 30 pin in the box, just like that. On the top of your device, you get a hold switch on the right. So when you move it to the left and it sees the orange indicator, you go to your screen and there it is it has a little lock on it so like if you had this in your pocket and you're listening to music and you don't want this thing start moving around and you know you can easily hit play pause in your pocket or skip a track go back and things like that because it's such a it's really sensitive to touch and things like that so you had the problem of skipping songs and doing other things on your iPod while you're just walking around listening to the music with it so that's why they included that feature on the iPod which is a very handy feature to the left of that in the center you do get a uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and that is the only way to 
hook headphones into it with your headphone jack. There's no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, so no wireless communications are built into any iPod that was made by Apple. To the left of that is an accessory port, so Apple would sell you special accessories to hook it up to a cable TV, for instance, to do slideshows and things like that. And uh, a, com a company called Griffin and Belkin, they made accessories for the iPods that had the accessory connector at the top for like the FM music transmission to play music from your iPod wirelessly over to your FM radio by selecting a special station for it. So that was kind of like wireless for the iPod back in the day. And there was probably other features for the iPod photo, like the ability to hook up like some sort of camera accessory to it to take pictures. Since they did market this as the iPod photo, they might have had an, had an accessory that can do that capability. Otherwise than that, on the back you do get a stainless steel backing, which is very scratch resistant. As you can see it's very scratch prone, I would say. But it held up over the years from the previous owner that had it and when I got it. It has the Apple logo at the top. It has iPod in the middle. 30 gigabytes, it lets you know the storage. And it has the FCC regulatory and the Apple design in California text at the bottom. So it's pretty strong on the back, so you don't have to worry about that. But scratching, it would really scratch up. The iPods came with the physical hard drive. So this has a 1.8 inch ZIF hard drive so it's a zero insertion force connector that hooks onto the logic board for these hard drives and in fact these hard drives would die out really quick because of drops if you drop the iPod hard enough you could rupture the hard drive um, platters or even this the uh, heads for the hard drive can slam into part of the platters damaging the drive and things of that nature but for these iPods during the time, they were durable. It's just that if you intensively abuse them, you can just break them easily. This iPod, when it came out, it came in two different storage configurations besides the 30 gigabyte model. It came in a 40 gigabyte, which was sold for $499, and it came in a 60 gigabyte, which was sold for $599. The 30 gigabyte was a limited run so it probably sold a little bit cheaper for like $299 but otherwise it mostly came in a 40 and 60 gigabyte configuration as for your photos that you could store on this device you can store file formats such as JPEG, BIMP, GIF, TIFF, PNG files so you can store you can store those on there and of course with iTunes 4.7 you can sync photos to it and audiobooks and music and things of that nature um, but other features that this iPod does include if we go down to the extras portion underneath photos it does have a clock so if you click clock it tells you the time you can set you can set an alarm clock on here and you can have it hook up to a pair of speakers with your 3.5 millimeter jack at the top and you can set an alarm you can tell you can set the time on here the alarm time and then it has sound so it has one sound a beep that it would make and you have a sleep timer so you can put in a sleep timer if you're going to like sleep for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or all the way up to 120 minutes and if it's plugged into a set of speakers it would just ring after that to wake you up after that amount of time. Here it has date and time so you can set your time zone which has been set to Eastern time. And then you have your date and time you can set that in here too. And it's currently showing July 17th 2000. Once you hook this thing up to iTunes it would sync with the proper time and things like that. But that had no issue of using your iPod or things like that. Since it's actually reverted back to 2000 as the date, there was no issues currently on this iPod using it to play music or anything like that. And iTunes or macOS Catalina would just be able to sync up to it and put the proper time on it. And you have time on title. So pretty much means at the top here, that's the title bar at the top. It would tell you the time in the middle. And you can switch it between 
24 hours and 12 hour format, whatever format you like. And it tells you the date at the top too. Other extras, you can have a calendar, uh, contacts, my bad. So it contacts pretty much whatever contacts you would add into iTunes through like iCal at the time or iChat or or some cal uh, some um, contact application Apple had at the time, you can put them in here. So pretty much this could be your portable PDA for when you had your flip phone or when you had to go to a pay phone or at the office and you want to have your numbers on you. And let's say you didn't want all your phone numbers on your phone, for instance, your flip phone or your rocker, whatever phone you had back then, you can put them on your iPod. And if you had this thing with you anywhere, you can say, hey, I'm at a pay phone. Let me go into contacts and get numbers for anybody you want to call and since this isn't set up with any contacts in here it does go through instructions so it gives you instructions that you can scroll through and pretty much it says your iPod can store contacts and calendar events if you're using iSync with Mac OS 10.2 or later open iSync and choose device add device then select iPod and click sync now to store contacts manually, open address book, Microsoft, my, uh, Microsoft Enclosure, or Palm Desktop and export contacts as V cards. Enable your iPod for disk use, then drag the V cards into the contact folder on the iPod. For details and instructions, see the iPod user help guide in iSync. So, pretty much the iSync application on the Apple computers can be used to sync your contacts into it and through a dress book. So currently Apple still has a dress book on their computer so you can still do it that way. Or like for instance you had Palm software you can use Palm or the Microsoft equivalent on here and you can even export those different files as V cards and drag and drop them over into iTunes under the contact under the contacts um, category and your sample so they give you a sample so this is like a sample of a contact so it tells you like the name the company what they're working as it has a list of telephone numbers their home phone office mobile and this is probably just some generic uh, numbers that was just made in a system just to show you I mean if you call them they might not even work but you can go ahead and try um, it has website so you can put a website in here so if you're on by your computer you can type that in and get going to that website which is apple support slash ipod and it has the office address so this is just a basic office address you can add you can add a home address and you can put a note in there so Apple pretty much puts here's a sample to show you all that can be displayed in a contact on your iPod so that's pretty cool you can put a lot of different things on here so this was a precursor to of course the iPhones implementation of contacts on their on their system pretty much and you also had calendar on the iPod so here you can do all and you can select dates so you can just move the scroll reel left to right or right to left and you can go all the way through to next month through the next year things like that select a date you can put to do and then it would pop up a to-do list there and it tells you beep so essentially of course hook it up to a pair of speakers and you had an appointment to go to and this thing was hooked up and it would just beep and it'll probably display it on the screen let you know you have a calendar event for that day notes notes would probably be synced over through iSync so the instructions it says to view text files here enable iPod for disk use then drag text files to the notes folder on the iPod and of course it refers you to the iPod user documentation for more information so essentially any iPod was able to be used as a flash drive so like for instance let's say you didn't want to buy a flash drive and you had your 30 gig iPod or even your 60 gig iPod and you were like hey I want to put all my stuff on here I can copy files to and things like that you can enable that within the computer 
on iTunes and say, use this iPod as disk space. So essentially you can plug it into a Windows computer and it would come up under the file explorer as a iPod. It would just say iPod and you can click it and it would just have an empty folder and you can drop files into it and things like that. So essentially this device could do everything you need it to do. With um, today's devices, you can't really do that. But if let's say you still had one of these iPods and you were willing to use it for like a hard drive, external hard drive to bring files to and from or whatnot, or you just wanted to try it out, you can you can still do it. That would still work. So you can have your notes on here too and also other files, but you can't access those extra files through the operating system on the iPod. They're just stored in the hard drive for you to access from computer to computer, just like a physical flash drive would be. Another extra feature that the iPod the iPod came with is games. So here it has Brick as one of the games and you can click the center to start playing it. And essentially you can listen to music, kill some time here and things like that. Just to have a little good time. You can at the time, you can buy more games through the iTunes store. They were like $4.99 a piece. And you could just buy a bunch of iPod games on here and just have everything you need. Here you had Music Quiz, which you probably have to have songs that support it for that feature to work. Here's Parachute. So essentially, you have a guy parachuting down and you just and just shoot so that's parachute so that's parachute and then you have solitaire at the bottom which is a pretty much just like the windows version and of course look at that you can see the little apple logo they put there on the deck of cards so it's pretty much like a windows xp version but of course apple put their copyright on it and if you go back under above extras you have photo so here in photos it would show you a list of photos that you can view on here currently we don't have anything set up but here it has the slideshow settings so you can go in and see the different settings for the slideshow so you can hit time per slide and it would give you any amount of seconds from 2 to 20 and you can do manual if you want music you can say now playing or on to go or anything like that or off. Repeat so you can have it repeat the same music or go through your whole album that's on the iPod. You can shuffle photos so you can have it go through photos not in sequential order. It can just go through randomly or you can have it off and have it go through in order however you like. Transitions, so you can do transitions on here. You can do random, push across, push down, wipe across, wipe down, wipe from center, or you can have no transitions. And TV out, there's an ask, so you would click on it and you would turn it from the ask to on. And then down here, TV signal would be the NTSC or PAL or NTSC, so there's only two types. Since we don't have that, we'll just turn that off. And you have music. So here you, have, you can look at your playlist, artists, albums, songs, podcasts. You can even put on here your genres, your composers, audiobooks, things of that nature. So albums, you can go to all. And currently nothing's synced on the device, but it will show you everything. And... Underneath the um, extras, you have settings. So here you can see everything that you want to know about your iPod. So at the top, you have the about. So it tells you that's my iPod. So it has my name. It says Kyle's 4th Generation iPod, iPod 4th Gen. It has no songs on it currently. Zero photos. It tells you how much storage is on this iPod. 29.7 gigs of capacity. And available is 26.2 gigabytes. It's running iPod software 1.2.1 and of course serial, no, um, serial number and the model number of this iPod. Underneath the belt you have the main menu and you can have 
music on and it's pretty much you can you can turn different things on and off on this iPod for the menu so you can add more things to the menu so I believe for instance for photos we can do photo import on extras on for clock so we'll turn all these on and see what they actually do so you can even put voice memos on here too which is pretty nice so I believe when you turn all of these features on you don't have to go into the subcategories that came with the iPod you can just go right into anything you want to access on the iPod which is pretty nice if you just wanted something to go right in and just get to work so we'll look at that in a minute underneath the main menu you have shuffle so shuffle would go through songs albums or off so you can shuffle individual songs or or albums at a time so the iPod would know what an album is and just shuffle it for you repeat you can also have it repeat once all or off so you can repeat a song once more or you can repeat every song you have all all over again backlight timer so you can set it from off two seconds five seconds 10 15 20 and always on which currently I have it to always on audiobooks you can have the narrator go in a normal tone of voice or they can talk slower or faster depending on what your needs are from in from a digital narrator underneath that you have your EQ so that's your audio check you can do your acoustics your bass booster your bass reducer your classical your dance your deep your electronic your flat hip-hop jazz Latin loudness lounge piano pop R&B rock and small speakers and spoken words triple booster triple reducer voice booster so voice boosters vocal booster is the last one so essentially you can go through and actually fine-tune how you want certain songs to sound like let's say you had a lot of jazz a lot of hip-hop a lot of Latin music a lot of rock, um, rap hip-hop um, and things like that or any other type of music they would give you the option on the iPod to change it and even for small speakers like if you didn't have a big sound system you had a small speaker you can tune the EQ on device to play better on that type of system but currently it's set to off but you can always go in and change everything as a fine-tuned detail which was pretty nice for an iPod and you have complications which is probably like a special features for the iPod you have sound check so sound check would send a signal through your headphones and to your speaker to let you know if left or right is working or whatnot essentially underneath that you have clicker so it does have a built-in speaker if you can hear that when I turned on clicker so you can have the iPod make a sound when you use the clicker or you can have it through your headphones and so right now you can't hear it but if I, you had headphones plugged in on the iPod you can actually hear the click wheel sound through it or both so both would do it through the speaker on device and through your headphones so we're gonna leave that to why not both we'll leave it to both and you have date and time at the bottom which of course we saw that earlier contacts language so you can obviously select any language that the iPod supports legal information of course that's Apple's legal information as of 2005 that they put in here and you can reset all settings or you can cancel and go back so the iPod does have a speaker system built in but you can't listen to any of your audio through it it's really only meant for you to hear the click wheel make it sound when you move it that's the only thing it does so here we go so here's we turned on all the different features in the settings so now you can have your your music is going to show there your photos your playlists your artists your albums complications songs podcasts genres composers audiobooks extras clock calendar so pretty much all of your important 
items you want to access daily without digging through sub menus you can just tell it to hey put it on the iPod's main screen for me so that's pretty much what we did here and we'll take a look at voice memos and voice memos is empty it doesn't tell you how to sync it but that's through iTunes essentially photo import import photos so okay so when you go there you plug this in to the computer and it would go through the process of syncing photos to the iPod so this is the iPod photo fourth generation model this was the first color iPod so that was another reason why Apple called it the photo because it was also a fully colored LCD display of course they did make a model before this fourth generation, which was just called iPod fourth generation, monochrome display, and it had the, it had the same look as this one because this iPod took the same design and just put a color display in it. But we'll take a look at that iPod, and we'll take a look at some other iPods on this channel, and we'll try to compare them. We're going to compare every iPod as possible, and we will take a look at their software features and things like that and we'll dig more into the software side on the computer we'll actually do it through the iBook back here and we'll play around with the software on here but otherwise than that that's it for the video of today if you guys like it hit the like button subscribe for more videos like this I plan on doing more with the iPods because I have a, a lot of them to go over on the channel and take a look at and get into different types of videos to make for software and things like that and follow me on twitter at the apple guy 99 and take a look at the description for links to the twitter channel and to my ebay store which i am starting to sell stuff on there so if you guys want to take a look at stuff that i put on there which is mostly computer parts and things like that go go ahead feel free take a look and whatnot but as a anyway guys hope i see you guys in the next one